Our next speaker is a leading democracy activist, an opposition spokesperson, a human rights lawyer who was arrested multiple times as part of a new generation of freedom seekers in Zimbabwe. Fadzai Mahiri is someone who has a, has a master's of law from the University of Cambridge. She enjoyed a distinguished legal career abroad, worked for the International Criminal Court in The Hague, for, for the UN International Human Rights Tribunal in Rwanda, and she could have stayed in uh, abroad and had a very prominent legal career, but she went back home to Zimbabwe, which in many ways is a failed state, and has the courage to speak out against the government. She was arrested multiple times. We didn't know she'd be able to make it here to Geneva if, she, if her passport wouldn't be taken away. We're really thrilled that you're here with us. Fadzai, you have the floor. Thank you, Halal. Two years ago, I woke up in a maximum security prison in Zimbabwe with no toilet, no water, and no underwear. Inmates ate watery porridge with our hands because we were not permitted spoons. Before lights off, we had to li line up in queues for roll call. Groups A, B, C, or D. D was for dangerous. And even though the other wom women there had committed murder, armed robbery, and infanticide, I was put in the dangerous group, all because of a tweet. So it might surprise you that after repeated arrests and wrongful imprisonment, I've come here today to the UN, optimistic, because the crackdown now taking place in Zimbabwe is a sign that we are winning. Even within his own party, Mr. Mnangagwa is weak. Their own intelligence tells them that the opposition will win this election in the coming summer. I'm the national spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for Change, the country's main opposition party. Because we dare to challenge the system, I've been arrested repeatedly. My car has been smashed four times. I survived an armed robbery on my house. And then in 2021, local police slammed into a bus and hurt a baby. I remember seeing a video of the mother carrying a pale, limp baby, crying, grabbing the police officer by the collar, crying, he killed my baby. I tweeted against this egregious act of police brutality. I said, this is rogue policing. It's a disproportionate and unconstitutional use of force. No, police, no baby should die because of police brutality. And by the time I tweeted about it, it had already gone viral but they arrested me anyway, and that's how I ended up in the country's maximum security prison. I was charged with communicating falsehoods prejudicial to the state, and I learned firsthand how the government would manipulate the law for their own gain. The magistrates and prosecutors had no regard whatsoever for my fair trial rights. They refused to admit the baby of the mother and the dead baby. They called me a liar. They said the baby wasn't dead. I faced a potential 20-year prison sentence because of my tweets. I'm free for now, but in Zimbabwe, nobody is truly yet free. And so I'm here today to let the world know that Zimbabwe is currently reeling under a dictatorship much worse than Robert Mugabe. Almost half the population live under extreme poverty because those in power would rather loot and persecute than lead. The government's war against freedom and its weaponization of the law against myself and other government critics, journalists, and civic society members, including Job Sikala and Jacob Ngarivume, who are still in wrongful detention, are calculated to send a chilling message to the rest of society. We're watching you, even on Twitter, and this is what you get, punishment for participating in opposition politics. Now, I wouldn't risk my life and freedom if I didn't sincerely believe that change is possible. Courage doesn't mean that you're not afraid. It means that you act in spite of your fear because you believe in a greater cause. And I choose courage. 
This summer, Zimbabweans go to the ballot box with one simple mission, to win Zimbabwe for change, to install ethical, competent leaders who believe in freedom, dignity, and prosperity for the many and not just the few. It is difficult, but we have to emancipate the jewel of Africa from the imprisonment of its current dictatorship. Hope and action are the sustenance for those who change the world. Thank you.